Hi there, um, AED corner cutters for After Effects. When you download the zip file here on the right hand side you can see um, the corner cutters script file which is the main script file and then a subfolder which contains all the individual scripts and little icons for those scripts. For example there's one icon. So when you download this you navigate to the script UI panels directory in your After Effects installation folder. You simply drag and drop those items as they are into that folder. This AED uh, under slash corner cutters file is the one that loads your toolbar and it accesses all the individual scripts in this folder. Um, if you're building your own toolbar, everything is just accessible in this folder and you can use individual scripts and there are little icons in different implementations such as FT toolbar. So I'll just load After Effects now. If you click on Window, it appears here at the bottom of your Window menu. Same on Mac and PC. So I click that. My toolbar AD Corner Cutters loads up here. Corner Cutters is a package of individual scripts that are designed to be little helpers that eliminate a lot of repetitive clicking in After Effects. Um, okay, so hopefully this will develop and I will think of some other little things that will be very helpful in the future and uh, get them up on aescripts.com. Um, so I'm going to pop through each script and just give a little rundown, a few examples. Hopefully they can uh, do a little work for you. Okay, so tidy up. Uh, this sorts the project panel into correct folders, looks at items in the project panel and tidies them up into compositions, audio, stills, footage, solids, missing footage, old folders and vectors. Um, any folders that are emptied out are thrown into an old folders folder in case you need to reuse them or rebuild a structure. Um, it's a good way of isolating missing footage, uh, maybe isolating stills from uh, non-still footage um, and seeing how many items are in your folders by revealing the common tab in the project panel. So for example, um, here's a project, perhaps you inherited it from somebody you don't know, can't make head or tail of it, don't know what goes where, you, you, you need to get it back into some kind of order so that you can maybe continue on the project. So tidy up is a simple one click solution. You click it, project panel is nice and tidy. You now know all your audio files are in that folder. You know there's three of them in it. Uh, 26 comps you're dealing with, eight stills, 33 solids, 116 footage items, non-still items. Um, you know you've eight missing items to resolve and six vector files. So a nice way if you need to look for your vector files. So you could be working through the project and um, maybe things are getting a little messy again. You just click tidy up again. It'll resort everything back to where it should be. Um, so what you might do is you've isolated your missing footage so you can now you know double click these guys and go back and maybe resolve these guys rather than you know searching through your whole project if you've hundreds and hundreds of items. Okay, traffic lights. Um, this uses layer tagging and color to see what's done and what's not done. Unfortunately, the layer color will only change with AECS5 plus users. After one cycle of clicks, it deletes all the markers if you want to get rid of the tagging. Um, be aware that this script deletes all previous markers on a layer. Simply click on it. Traffic lights, click it once. Colors the layer red and labels it not done. You click it again, in progress, orange. Click it again, green for done. Click it again to get rid of markers, go back to whatever you want to do. Um, doing some basic color correction on you know, lots and lots of different clips um, and rendering them individually uh, from the same composition. So maybe spending half an hour in each clip working through it and maybe I might start like that. So everything's not done. Maybe I come in at 10, work until lunch, and I get through 
uh, you know, that amount, like traffic lights, in progress. So maybe they're in progress until your client has approved them. So eventually you get through everything. Uh, or maybe, you know, you're not sure about that particular guy. So you can, you know, just see what's done, what's not done. Then the following day, that many get uh, approved. So they're done. Yes. Brilliant. And you have to come back to these guys. Okay, BG flip. Um, this simply toggles the background color between three very commonly used colors for your background. White, mid gray and black. Uh, it's useful if you want to render something out as straight against white rather than pre-multiplied against black. It's just a little time saver. If I click my background, changes the background to white, to mid gray, to black. White, mid gray, black. Just very simple. Uh, I'm rendering it um, but when I flip it to white, I notice I have some edging. Um, so I need to get rid of that by using my uh, color matting effect. And there it's gone. So I know I'm not going to have a problem with that now. And then I could just check it against the other backgrounds real quick. So this is one example where it's handy to just, you know, quickly change your background color. Um, if I have this multicolored image here, um, just for some quick grading and trying stuff out, um, just literally cycling through color ranges, just see what might look best. Um, just a quick way to do it, not hopping through the menu here looking for hue saturation or similar effects. So if I get that effect and delete it, uh, Another way of thinking about it is I could stick it on an adjustment layer and say the adjustment layer is maybe at 50%. So if I uh, flip colorize the adjustment layer, um, only 50% of that hue information is coming through. So just allows you to mess around with stuff and maybe get some interesting looks. Um, another thing is maybe making um, a new solid um, and instead of dealing with solid colors we might hit a solid like that and maybe i just want to make it a uh, green solid that's okay maybe a blue bluey green uh maybe back into the blue range um nice quick way of just hopping around a color wheel a feather increment so this feathers a mask or masks on a layer by incrementing so that can be plus or minus increment available in the little edit box here in the right so starts off as set to 10 pixels so it eliminates the need to individually select mass and feather their properties I just make a whole pile of mass and we just uh, show how that works so I might I have no mass selected on that layer so if I click that it's set to 10 pixels if I click feather feather increment uh, by the way, there's little explanations of what these scripts do. If you just hover over it, there's little tips pop up um, if you forget what they do. So if I click feather, it feathers every mask by 10 pixels. That can be quite useful. Um, if you consider maybe people that are working with rotoscoping, they may want to, you know, subtract a pixel of the feathering of all masks or certain masks you know maybe they've 100 masks on a particular scene and it's just a nice quick way to access those controls um, so if I select maybe that bunch of masks there and I do a, a minus 10 so you just type it in click return and if I click it there then as you can see those particular masks have actually uh, gone back to zero feathering so you can uh, you can see it there so 10 pixels no pixels um, so incidentally if you are using this script with uh, another toolbar that you've built yourself so if I load up my FT toolbar um, I'll just put it beside corner cutters there um, it's paired with uh, 
a special script for the toolbar so to replicate this edit box functionality of the corner cutters toolbar if I go to an FT toolbar or a script launcher there's an extra few scripts included so this is set feather increment if I roll over it so you install that or just put it beside your your feather increment script so if I click that it just loads up a little prompt box so I put in my how much I want to feather the particular mass by in this box so it's five in there so just feather by one pixel click OK and then if I click um, feather uh, it'll then feather all these masks by one pixel if I click it again maybe minus two pixels um, click feather goes it'll reduce the feathering by two pixels on all these by another two by another two by another two by another two so this basically just replicates the edit box functionality that we have on the corner cutters toolbar if you like to do things your own way okay AED uh, matte from white uh, basically uses the white content of a layer to use as a matte for itself generated from the luminance channel of the piece of footage so an example of that is um, I have a dirt map here I might uh, drag it on my comp so it's a JPEG black and white no alpha channel so it's just a one click solution to knock out the dark parts um, so uh, just just a quick way of, of working with that if you're working with a few items together um, it's just a one click instead of setting up uh, tracking mats etc uh, very handy use it all the time the logo on here um, again quick way of cutting it out one click solution uh, get job done straight away one thing to point out is it uses the set mat um, uh, effect and a fill effect so it fills with white if I hadn't filled with white um, you sometimes can get some black fringing so if there is a fill fill white on it um, you basically um, can make sure your edges are nice and clean and a pure white but one thing to point out is if you have the effect on a layer and you click the button again it basically inverts um, the mat so you can see corner cutters is, has become transparent if I click it again it reverses the mat again so um, that can be useful in itself okay reload um, the idea of this is that you reload your selected layers from the timeline instead of the project panel um, so you basically don't have to right click on pieces of footage reveal layer source in the project look for them in here right click and click reload you just do it where you would expect it from the timeline um, so if I presume maybe these three pieces of footage I'm rendering from my 3D application, I'm waiting for frames and I'm just checking occasionally see see are they done. So if I click reload, so now my 3D application has rendered those frames. So if I click reload, uh, jumps to the end of the timeline there and nice simple way to just reload your footage. Um, another function of this script, if we see down at the bottom, I have a missing piece of footage. So this will attempt to heal the link to this piece of footage. If I click reload, it's attempting to heal the link. Uh, click OK and it's found the footage. So that's useful if you are constantly updating files and so So that's a good way to heal uh, a link to piece of footage that's gone missing that has been now replaced in your file system or is constantly being updated perhaps you're working w in tandem with somebody else so that's reload okay swap footage um, similar to reload it just allows you to swap out a piece of footage in your composition uh, window rather than the project window um, saves you the hassle of right clicking on the layer revealing it in the project and you know swapping out that piece of footage um, so it's just a quick way you select what you want to swap out swap footage um, and select a new uh, new piece of footage and it just brings it straight in be aware that it swaps 
um, the item out in the project window. So if you've used that in multiple comps, um, it will use the new piece of footage in those multiple comps. So um, it does what it says on the tin and just a speedier way of swapping out a piece of footage. Okay, usual effects. If I have no layer selected in my composition window and I just click it, it adds an adjustment layer labeled showing you that it has levels, box blur, hue saturation and curves effects applied to it. Um, so it's just a very quick way to um, apply some very commonly used effects uh, in your composition. Um, so it's just a matter of clicking the button and off you go. Um, if you that doesn't suit your needs, if I select maybe these three layers here and I click usual effects, it actually applies those effects to those particular um, layers. So I'm saying my box blur is uh, ready and waiting for me there. Um, so it's just a quick leg up and a quick way to apply some very commonly used effects um, just to recap on them it's levels box blur hue saturation and curves uh, fades a layer or layers and performs correct in point or out point trimming um, so you set the desired times in frames I find frames more useful stick in 10 frames or 9 frames or 8 frames if you want to be quite specific so um, 25 frames would be one second of a 25 FPS composition so you set the time here, sets it as a variable, and these three operate based on what you've input here. Uh, so if I select my 35 layers and I click uh, fade in, so it'll fade all those layers in over 25 frames. If I hit T on my keyboard and reveal my opacity, you can see the keyframes of those layers over 25 frames. You know what, I'll, I'll do it over 5 frames. I'll fade them in over five frames get them in nice nice and quick and maybe fade them out over you know maybe uh, get them off quickly maybe four frames um, so just click my fade out button so there you go S self explanatory for the the fade in fade out uh, very useful um, uh, allows you to fade in your in or out your audio levels as well. So if I uh, look at the whole project there, maybe from there I want to fade that out um, maybe quicker. So maybe over 10 frames I want to drop that audio out. So it drops it out to there. Uh, also works on lights. So you can see there, so if I just want to fade my light up, so have the intensity at 0% and then after 10 frames it's at 100% so here we go from here so on these two layers and I click blend again Oop, I haven't got that layer turned on so just blending between the two of them uh, nice and tidy trims layer A uh, to where you had the timeline and trims layer B the one underneath to 10 frames back um, it's very handy if you're doing a lot of little editing uh, in After Effects by the way if using cross blend fade in fade out on another implementation such as FT Toolbar Script Launcher, using it in a different capacity. Um, I've included uh, set fade time, little script and its own little icon uh, to replace the functionality of this little edit box on my Corner Cutters Toolbar. So you simply, if you want to set the time here, you just click the button and stick in, you know, maybe 12 frames. Um, then as you're working through the project, maybe you want, you know, you want a four second fade in or a hundred frame fade in. So change that to a hundred um, and off you go. Then this guy picks up the 100 frames. So your fade ins are going to be 100 frames until you click that again and reduce them back to 12 frames. Um, so that's set fade time. So, um, 
which sets up the variable for fade in, fade out, and cross blend. So this is to aid with basic editing and layer sliding. I think it's useful when you need to slide a large group of layers. So if I'm working in a composition like this, and you know, there's, what is there, like 70 layers, etc. Maybe I want to select this guy and all the layers under it and drag it back to this point. So if I just click my select here down, I know that for sure everything underneath that layer is selected, so I can just drag that back and snap it to there. Maybe if I control click that and, you know, I, I drag that guy, I know that all the layers underneath it are selected. So um, it's just quite a handy way. Maybe I move down to this one, select here down, script, and then I can move all them as a unit that way. Kill dead space. Sounds like an ominous script. Um, so this searches the comp and removes any space between layers by ripple editing backwards. Useful where there are accidental gaps between edits. There is an option to preserve overlaps, which I'll explain in a sec. It's also a useful way to uh, sequence all the layers on your timeline. So maybe if we started with a situation like that and if I just clicked kill dead space I don't want to preserve overlaps I just want to stack all the layers uh, sequenced so I'm gonna click no um, so it respects the original in and out points that were set and it just makes sure there's no dead space between the layers what I'm terming dead space is say this space that I'm showing you here um, maybe you've uh, maybe if I delete some of these layers randomly um, you've done a little bit of editing and you just don't want to make the mistake of even if I put a, you know a tiny little one frame gap there that you mightn't have spotted and it's rather annoying rendering out, rendering out a long project to discover that you've got a couple of little edit things wrong. So it might be a big long project with uh, kill dead space. If I don't want to preserve overlaps yet, so I click no. So it just drags everything back from right to left and kills all those uh, spaces. A little transition on that layer to that point. So, if I, say, grab all of uh, the layers just around that point, um, maybe this guy, so I've dead space here, dead space here, dead space here. Um, I want it to detect that I've done a transition here, and I don't want it to slide that layer. I want it to act like this layer is a unit and drag that back. Um, across the whole project. So if I click kill dead space, do I want to preserve overlaps? Yes, I do. So it kills those dead spaces. And if I zoom in there, it's kept my transition intact as well and moved those two layers as a unit. So if I have a longer clip here and I click snip once, snips the footage in maybe I go up to here and at about the Pope I click it again goes to snip out automatically trims the um, work area duration to the in and out so that's good if I want to just add it to the render queue at that stage it'll just render out that part uh, maybe that's what I want um, if I click it a third time um, it'll trim the entire comp to the new in and out that I've selected. It also asks me here, uh, do I want to, am I ready to render? Um, so, yes. And that comp has been trimmed. An alternative way to uh, choose and edit your shots in the comp. Um, another little helper script. 
simply enter a frame value for the length of the current composition. I find I have to constantly edit the length of a composition many times a day. So it's good to have this functionality exposed. So if I just, um, you know, want to make this comp like 50 frames long, hit return, job done. Uh, I don't have to go into my comp settings. So if, if you have no need for certain uh, scripts that I've supplied on my toolbar, you can rearrange anything you wish by using another product such as FT Toolbar or RD uh, uh, Script Launcher, both of which can be found on aescripts.com. Uh, cost a few dollars and well worth it. So you can arrange your own uh, toolbar to suit uh, using other people's uh, scripts and bits and pieces if, if you wish. Also, the uh, help button on the end, simply you click it and you link to my website up here on top, um, which will just go to the tutorials. And um, as I develop some new stuff, maybe keep an eye on this and hop over to my website and I might have some new scripts that might interest you. Uh, thanks very much for listening and I wish you luck in cutting some corners.